Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about what's the difference between Shopify version 1.0 and Shopify version 2.0. Now that Shopify Unite, the conference, they announced uh, basically, you know, the new version of online store 2.0. What's new? What's different? Right? What is it that you can expect out of this? And who benefits out of this okay so the first thing that i'm gonna go into is performance so if we look at the first theme that you get when you sign up with shopify for example it's called uh the butte now when you go and you use lighthousing to check the performance of it you can see that it's not great okay it's not great performance right you was getting like a 72 percent uh, on the performance, you know, first content full is 3.1 seconds. And I mean, this doesn't even have any images. This doesn't have anything on it to really like, you know, to make it like a heavy website, but it still took a long time for this page to actually load. Now for store owners, you know, that's no good, right? That's no good because you want your website to be super fast and you want it to basically load instantly. Uh, the faster that the website loads, you know, the faster that somebody can go and see a product and then make a purchase and, and, and buy whatever it is that they want to buy. OK, so this was a no, no. Right. And basically they improved it by a lot. OK, right now, this is the new version of Shopify online store 2.0. Right. And they're using the theme called Dawn. And this theme is actually getting a 96 percent of performance, accessibility, 100%, 87 best practices, 85 SEO, most of those things you could go in, you know, improve it even more. So I'm pretty sure you could get up to at least a 95 or even some 100% when it comes to even SEO. And if you look over here, the contentful paint is 2.0 seconds, which is not bad. It can be better, but it's not bad. It's a great improvement from what they had. If we look over here, right? Like this is no, no bueno. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that was happening here. Okay. Now, even for like the top selling theme that also follows the 1.0 way of doing themes, uh, which is this one called Wookie. This is one of the top selling themes uh, right now on theme forest. And if we do the test, we come in here and we check what they have. Dun, 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 dun. Jesus Christ, hurry up, please. My God, is it slow? <laughs> okay, so this is getting a 46% performance. And I mean, this is the top selling theme. So again, there's a lot of stuff that Shopify is changing. I mean, they even removed using SAS and SAS being compiled natively by Shopify before you could just write your SAS files and then Shopify will go in and export it as CSS. Now they're not doing that no more. So, you know, it's also improving performance, but as you guys can see, you know, most themes that's out there that are using 1.0, they're not that great as far as performance. This is one of the reasons why most companies are gearing towards, you know, building their own online stores and then connecting to Shopify as a headless CMS. Okay. Because you have more control of what's happening in your application, how it loads, how fast it is. Like, let's say, for example, if you use something like Next.js, this is right here is Next.js commerce example that they have. If we look over here, click on lighthouse, let's generate this report. Give this one second. Okay. See how fast it is. Uh, accessibility 100 best practices 100 seo 100 and performance is a little bit debatable in the sense of you know i've seen this go higher uh but if you look over here first console for paint 1.5 seconds now again you might see a higher score on this uh for sure but again i'm using so many extensions and so many different things so keep that in mind same thing for the debut and for uh the wookie theme but I can guarantee you that <laughs> they're slow. Okay. The Wookiee theme is super slow and the debut theme is also slow. Okay. But this right here, you can see is a better performance as far as like when the website actually loads and, and actually paints, um, you know, the elements on the page. Okay. So it's actually much better. 
Now, of course, every single one of these websites that can be better performance. Okay. I've seen websites that are pretty legit that, you know, they connect into Shopify just as a hella CMS and, you know, they're getting like 100, right? On Lighthouse. So trust me, uh, it's actually a better way to do it like that. But again, why we are still building themes for, you know, Shopify and the Shopify store instead of just creating our own websites, right? Well, think about it like this. The average person that's going to sign up to Shopify, they don't have a in-house developer. They don't have an in-house team to go in and build them a customized website from scratch. Now, once you become a bigger company and you're using something like Shopify Plus, yeah, it makes sense for you to go and create a full application and then just use Shopify as a hella CMS, right? But the average person, the guy that's trying to sell a cup, the guy that's trying to sell the, the bullshit, <laughs> uh, beat up little, uh, Game Boy, uh, you know, the bootlegs, right? Those guys, they don't have a in-house developer to build them this type of applications. So they're going to use Shopify's platform and basically the online store, uh, 2.0. So this is what we're going to be using, right? Uh, again, so I'm showing you guys all of these different examples to show you why Shopify went in and upgraded things on their end. Okay. It's really more for the users. It's not really for us developers. Like <laughs> somebody might say, well, they gave us a couple of things for developers, bro. This is for the users. Okay. We want to make sure that the users have optimized websites, the websites load faster. And also too, let's talk about the customized section of this, right? All right, guys. So now let's take a look at the customized editor for Shopify. Now this is the version of debut, let's say 1.0. And basically when a user would go and sign up for Shopify, this is the editor that they will get for their themes. And let's say, for example, all of these are sections that you can create and customize. So let's say for us on our end as developers, we will go and create a section uh, for the website and allow the user to go in and add those things to the front page. Now they will have access to certain options, you know, pretty much like booleans, like if and else statements and being able to upload photos, etc. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in here. So let's say, for example, this right here is called an image with text overlay. We come in here at an image. Okay. We choose that image. We could choose, Hey, do we want that image to be aligned to the top? Do we want it to be aligned to the bottom? Okay. So pretty much this were like options that the user had available to them to sort of customize this to a certain extent, but it was very limited. So there's only so much that they could do and customize their website. Now, again, for example, you can add a section here to this home page. Let's say something that we have added. Let's say we wanted to add a slideshow. That slideshow will show up right here. We click select and then now it's placed inside of the home page. Now this is cool, right? This is, uh, this is nice. Okay. You could change it a little bit. You could say, okay, I want the image to show up here. This image to show up here. We could say, make this a little bit, uh, smaller. We could make it a little bit medium, a little bit large, right? This is basically just like variables that you're changing for this section and then choosing, you know, the different styles for that section and how it's going to show up on the page. Now, again, like I said, since there was a lot of limitations to this, uh, especially for, let's say, for example, if I wanted to take the slider and add it to, I don't know, to like the blogs page, right? You couldn't do that before. The only way to do it was if the developer himself went in and added that section to the blog template. Okay. Now with the new version of Shopify, let's see if I could pull this up. Okay. We can see right here, this is the dawn page right let me see if i refresh this reload uh give this one second okay uh with this we have full control of this meaning that if we go in and let's say for example this is the image banner i click on the image banner i can go in right here on the side you see that they move things from being on the left side to now being on the side uh as far as like the options you could change the images click on let's say uh, staff favorites, something like that. Click on that. Okay. Uh, you could change that through there. Let me see, put some nature, make it a little bit better. 
okay and there we go I got this thing right in the middle so I gotta move this okay so there we go so now um, basically we have the image there okay they could go in again also change this hey do you want this to be top position center position uh, bottom position whatever it is is it going to be an accent right accent scheme tool, background tool, etc so this is the things that's coming uh, with this section but what's cool about this is the fact that now within a section people can go in and align things how they want it meaning for example if I come here and say you know what I don't want the heading to be above the button I want the heading to be below the button you can do that now okay uh, same thing for let's say for this section image with text you can now come in here and say hey I want to align this a little bit better I want the paragraph on the top let's say for example I want the button in the middle I don't know why somebody would do that but hey now they got the option to be able to customize that section completely now another thing that's super cool is the fact that now you're not limited to just the home page where if you create a section that section can be moved around throughout the whole website so I'll give you an example if we go to the products page I click on the default product page I can come here and again like I told you guys people can move this around however they want now they have full control of this without having to go into the code again this new updates were really meant for the users okay it's not for the developers I mean yes it's gonna be great because now we're allowing our users to change things around but it's really for them so they could go in and, and have more control of their website okay uh, let's say for example moving the text like this I wanted to move let's say the I don't know the title to be below the description or right next to the description I don't know why you would do this but <laughs> again now they have control of this they can do this on their own okay so this is what makes it you know pretty cool as far as like the update and again you could go in and save this and say you know what I want to create a template for this I'm gonna call this uh, let's say uh, shoes template or let's say shoes product template okay and then you could choose the product you know whatever product it is uh, that you might want to go and attach this a specific template for it okay because let's say for example if you go to uh, websites that's you know super popular like let's say some furniture stores um, if you're selling the bed it, you want to have a different template than if you're selling a sofa okay you might want to have the images aligned a different way right so now we're creating like sub templates for each section okay so think about it like this everything that we're seeing right here think of it as sections and then now we're allowing the user to be able to decide where they want to place things that's the biggest changes that you're gonna see when it comes to uh, Shopify okay it's performance and also to the fact that now sections or let's say the themes are really section based so think of this if you are a react developer think of this as now everything is component based and when we create a theme we're basically aligning those components a certain way that it might look good or it might be the way how we designed it but we have to think that now the user has full control of those components within that page at any given time they could change things around however they want to and that's the goal most people are gonna want to have full control of their themes um, and that's where you know this new 2.0 features are going to really shine and I think a lot of the users are gonna be very very happy because again performance is up and just the ability to customize things even better like man it's a blessing for them okay I've done drop shipping before and I could tell you that having this type of uh, features it really helps out especially when you don't want to go into the co-editor and having to change things around now you could just do things through here okay and at the same time a lot of the things that we're talking about here in the theme development course 
and they can also flow to the app development course right i think i've talked about this in a live stream in my youtube channel where i told you guys that if you have an application before you will have to go in and say hey i create this application and you will have to tell the user hey implement this code on this section of your theme and the user will have to go in select the section right the html and css and javascript etc and we'll have to go into the code base and go into like let's say a section here and we'll say well i don't know what i'm doing but the app developer told me to paste it here right in between this thing and what happens if somebody comes in that don't know how to code you know delete some element or they forget to you know set up the the closing tag right now their website is all broken okay now the website is all broken it doesn't look exactly how it's supposed to look okay so now with this new features if you are a app developer when you create your app you have sections just like this same way how we created the sections in in the theme or you know the guys that built dawn same way how they created the sections they can now come in and say you know what I want to take this contact form, right? I want to take this contact form and I want to move it to be like, I don't know, right above uh, the products page, right? Okay. So again, <laughs> imagine this is your application. You will have a section in here where you can place uh, that code for your application. And when you uninstall your application, it automatically removes that section for you before the user had to remember oh i forgot that i had this extra code and i have to go and delete it if you don't know how to code you don't want to be doing this <laughs> you get what i'm saying so this is the the problems that shopify figured out finally like hey man this is the problem that's happening for the users let's go and make their lives a little bit simpler okay but you know it takes time sometimes when you're working in big companies like this to do a big change like this you know you have to do it in a conference you have to go in and let the whole community know like hey guys we rolled out all these changes okay and it's going to be a benefit for you it's going to be a benefit for the users so definitely go check it out right that's what they did <laughs> and it's for a reason right they had to do it this is going to help them you know get more people into shopify and it's actually better for us as shopify developers okay we definitely going to see more sales as long as we create you know themes that are like component based or section based where we're allowing the user to go in and drag and drop everything into their pages so hopefully you guys enjoy this video if you learn something from this man and you're watching this on youtube or you're watching this on whatever platform follow me coding phase right subscribe to this channel give us a like give us a, a comment tell me what you think all right guys so anyways man we're going to continue this in this course and i'll see you guys in the next video we're finally going to start building something okay i just wanted to make sure to show you guys what's the benefits what's the pros and cons what is it that we're getting for actually building now into online store 2.0 <laughs> all right guys i'll see you guys later peace